In this tutorial, we're actually going to create a, an animation for our knight. So to begin, we need to create atlases for the knight and his weapons. So let's go back into our atlas folder and right click, click create, and create smooth moves texture atlas. And remember, we need to rename it first, so let's call this knight. Now that we have the knight, we can click on this to open the atlas editor. And we'll just drag all of our night images here. Now you can see the images are all out of proportion. They don't fit. That's because Unity is trying to make these images fit into um, two by or the power of two. So it's distorting them a bit. Now one good thing about this Atlas editor is it will automatically convert these images into uh, non power of two, non nearest power of two, so that they should be real, real size. So let's go ahead and click on Rebuild Atlas and apply the changes. Now you can see it actually expanded everything out. Now you see the arm is still distorted. Sometimes it misses a few when it's trying to import, so to fix that, we just rebuild again and it pops. So now your source images are fixed and in a proper format. Again, they're not going to be included in, in the final build, so uh, they need to stick around for the editor. You don't want to delete them, but uh, it doesn't matter how high quality they are because they only be used in the editor. So now we have this atlas built. We go over here and we see it here. Let's go ahead and create another one. Name this one weapons. Drag in the knight's weapons. Rebuild, apply, and rebuild again just to be sure it got them all. See, it distorted that a bit, but now it's it's good. Okay, so now we have weapons, knight, and arena. So let's go ahead and create our animation. I have a folder here. We'll right click, go to create, smooth moves bone animation. You can also go up to the game object menu and create other smooth moves bone animation. We'll just do it here because we want it in this folder. Now this one doesn't have to be named right away, but I like to name my things right away. So let's go ahead and call this Knight. Now you'll notice over here in the inspector there's a button to open the animation editor or you can go to window and open the animation editor there, but we'll go ahead and open it here because it's convenient. This is the animation editor. It is a Utility window. I originally made it a dockable window, but the clipping was giving problems. It was chopping rotated images, which is not a bug in Unity, but it's definitely not a, a fun feature to deal with. So I made this a utility window so that the clipping looks clean. And to describe the, the overview here of different sections, this is the area where, you're, where, where you will see the animation um, and where you'll edit it. Over here, and you can adjust this, is your bone hierarchy. This is where all your, your bones for your character will go. Each bone gets a texture or it can just have a transform. You don't need a texture for every bone, but every texture does need a bone. Over here is your animation clips. You can have more than one animation clip, like standing, walking, attacking, running, different things like that. Here's where your timeline will be. This is your frames where you'll set all your keyframes. And then up here is the selected keyframes uh, properties. And that's where you change your position, rotation, things like that. So we'll begin by creating a hierarchy. You start with a root bone. You can't change that root bone, it's fixed. It's always at the base of the animation. So, so to create a new bone, you just click on this plus button and it just names a new bone Bone. We can do this several times. We get several bones. Let's go ahead and rename this bone. Right click on it. Go to rename bone. Turns it into a text box. And let's call this body. Click on this one. Right click. Click rename. Call this head. Right click. Rename. Call this helmet. 
Now the helmet, we actually want to be attached to the head, so wherever the head goes, the helmet will. So we can click on this, drag, and you see it'll turn green when it's ready to be dropped on. We'll drop it on the head. Now it's a child of the head bone. So whatever transform the head has, the helmet will have in addition to its own transform. Let's click on it. Let's create another one. Rename this to arm left. Now another way we can create children instead of dragging and dropping is right clicking on a bone and clicking add bone. It automatically makes it a child. Rename. Let's call this hand left. Do it again. Weapon. Now I want to add back to the root. I'll just keep creating the hierarchy here. Now the reason I'm not attaching the arms to the body like you would in a typical 3D animation is because it's a little bit easier in 2D if your bones are free. Now some bones like the hand and the weapon naturally flow with the arm bone and the helmet doesn't move at all, it just follows the head. So these are good cases of using children. But typically I like to have my things all attached to the root bone. That way I can just move them free and you'll see that as I animate. But it, your style is up to you. This is just the way I like to do it. Now we can also scroll through them like this, but if you want to see everything, you can just bring this up. Okay, so this is the knight. This is how he will look. You can see over here we've created a bone pretty much for every texture. The only exception is we have two textures for the face, but we're only going to be using one here. We'll just switch these in and out for different animations. Okay, now that we have the bone hierarchy set up, we're going to create our first clip. We do that by clicking the plus sign here. And you see that changes a whole bunch of things. First, it adds a new clip. It shows the timeline. It shows the animation area and the animation controls at the top. Let's go ahead and start by renaming this clip. Let's call this stand. We're going to do the stand animation first. Okay, now we have the stand animation, we can go ahead and start setting our keyframes. So to begin, the easiest way to do this is to begin with your frame zero. You can see in this timeline window we have a, a slider, but there's nothing set except for this uh, keyframe zero, but these are all empty right now, so nothing is being displayed up here. You always have to have a frame zero. You can't delete frame zero. It has to have some basis for each bone. So we'll start there. 